All right, we're back with an all new show. You know, we recently sat down with JB's, um, and she's the transgender daughter of Angela Stanton King, Blue Damage. There was a lot to be said online about that interview because, you know, she so articulately and passionately expressed how she believes that she's not loved by her mother, uh, a conservative and Republican political candidate, author, and former incarcerated individual, Angela Stanton King. And people online have had a lot to say about that because there's people, the people just don't understand how you couldn't love your child unconditionally. So today we've invited Angela Stanton King to come on the show. And I don't know how this is going to go, but I believe in having both sides of the conversation and trying to be fair and as impartial as we can. I know. Oh, go ahead, Blue. No, I was just about to say, I got a lot of feedback from particularly from women saying I didn't. I can't believe a mother could have a child that's that amazing. Because JB's came off amazingly well to our audience, right? So all the compliments that I got about JB's were followed by, I can't believe her mother did that to her. I can't believe she spent Mother's Day alone. I can't believe she's slandering her. So all I got was overwhelming support and love for JB's. And I went and looked back at some more of Angela's shenanigans. And I'm going to be honest, I had to meditate before this one because I'm nervous. She's very comfortable acting like a donkey. And so we'll see what happens. Yeah, and just to piggyback off of what both of y'all are saying, I just want to know the, the timeline. I want to know what was it like raising JBs, and where do you feel like the hostility started? That's my real, my biggest concern, because to, to go on social media as a parent, y'all know I'm a father, and talk about your child like that. When did that start? I want to know where that energy started, because I can't see me ever talking about my son like that on social media. That's just so, it makes me look bad. No, regardless of what you think your child is doing, it's a bad reflection on you. So I'm really interested to see how she feels about that and what's the timeline. Well, and for those of you that may have missed that interview with JB's, JB's and her mother, Angela Stan King, were just recently on Dr. Phil and they had an explosive interview. And so we had JB's on the show and this is what she said about going on the Dr. Phil show. On Dr. Phil, first of all, okay, so let me kind of get y'all the tease behind us that. Um, we would do these breaks um, if you haven't watched the episode, if you guys haven't watched it at home, I want everyone to get a chance to go watch the episode. There would be these like breaks every five minutes in between us talking and where we would be talking or arguing or whatever we were doing and he would just cut it and it would like, he didn't care. His uh, emotion to the thing was kind of very like mundane. I could just kind of feel from him that this was just yet another segment on the show and it was just kind of moving on. There was no actual effort to healing thing. And I mean, maybe it was because Angela was so irate and screaming and yelling over everybody. Maybe that did have something to play into it. And honestly, truly, I just don't think he understood like you just kind of spoke on. Again, like I said from the beginning, there was nothing that I honestly did think that a 50, 60 year old white man could tell me about my relationship with my mom that I've had for 17 uh, years plus. Uh, he doesn't really understand what it is to be black, queer, trans, any of the above. Um, so as a person, you can try your best to see where someone is coming from, but when you're so far away, you can't really like see where I'm coming from. You know what I'm saying? You you don't You don't really get it. So that's what that kind of was. I I do agree. I don't think he cared and I don't think he got it either. But he's rich. Did he, so. did he offer you any <laughs> type of support? Did he offer you all any type of follow-up support, family counseling? Did he offer to set anything up? He personally didn't offer to set anything up. I think a PA came once I had left the stage because mind you, there was a shouting match backstage. When Angela, they didn't air this part, but um, Angela ended up, towards the end, getting up and just walking off the stage and ripping her mic out. I and mean, she was screaming at me, and screaming at her. And that was the whole thing. And then um, she just walked off and I just went backstage and then one of the PS came I was like, hey, if you guys want to try this family counseling, like here's a link. And I'm like, girl, <laughs> but that was a it. Link. So let me ask you, Damage Blue, do you guys think that we'll be able to use our influence of being amazing future Emmy nominated talk show hosts uh, as uh, people who can actually change and transform the minds of Angela Stan King? Um, can I be honest? Intellectually speaking, I don't think she has the reach um, to meet us Ooh. where we are. So I, I feel like the minute the facts come out, she might get a little lost in the sauce and regress. That's my opinion. My people like her don't like facts because facts are make them allergic to, you know, their propaganda. 
Yeah. I think my goal is just to get some understanding and try to somehow see why you so angry. Where's the anger coming from, right? Like, so that's where I'm looking at it from. I don't know if we can change her mind or perspective. I just hopefully we could just pull the cover off and see this is why you're so mad because it's always rooted in something else. So that's my goal. Now, as a person who's openly gay and, and embraces and loves being gay and is proud to be gay, I have to tell you, you know, I was conflicted because we are bringing her into a world where a lot of people that support me um, are people of my community. But I will say, I think it's important to be able to try to pull the layers back on folks to kind of expose some of the ignorance or, or, or confusion or lack of information that they have and try to get to the heart of where their issue is. So I'm going to do my best to be objective and I've already done my Zen and, and, and blue has saged the set. And so let's see what happens mm -hmm. because I heard Angela's here. Welcome best-selling author, political candidate, and uh, mother, Angela Stanton King. Welcome to the show. Thank so, you guys so much so, for having me on. Of course. So, you know, you have been um, you have been on the Hollywood Unlocked blog. You've been on the Hollywood Unlocked show. We just recently interviewed your daughter, JB's, um, who's been very vocal about, you know, her movement and, and the trans movement that she's a part of. And so we wanted to welcome you here because although you've been talked a lot about, you haven't been talked to. And I just thought it was fair to open up the conversation to hear your point of view as you are a very vocal person. And so I want to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. And so um, one of the things that or at least once where I first saw you, you were, um, you know, once, once I became uh, aware of who Angela Stan King was, it was when you were pardoned by former President Donald Trump. And uh, when you were released, it almost seemed as if you had taken on the life of wanting to change the country and join, I think, the conservative party, right? Well, just to clarify, I got released in 2005. So I wasn't released from prison when I got the pardon from President Trump. And it was my experience after getting out of prison and rebuilding my life and getting educated on politics that I decided that I wanted to become more of a conservative versus a Democrat. And I'd always been involved in the nonprofit sector and working in my community. So I thought that Congress would basically be the same thing. So when you got released from prison and then later pardoned, at what part during that journey did you decide that in terms of politics, the conservative party was more aligned with where your personal interests lie? Um, from my own personal experience, you know, for one, I had been born into poverty, you know, generational welfare recipient. And when I got released from prison, because I was a convicted felon, I couldn't get welfare benefits. And because I couldn't get, you know, food stamps and Section 8 and be able to depend on that assistance on the first of every month, it really kind of like kicked me out of the nest and made me discover my greatness. And I realized that I could not only become a business owner, but I could become financially free by starting my own business. And I realized that a lot of the Democrat policies to me that constantly push welfare, it keeps people like me and people from the community that I come from stuck because we get content and we get comfortable with receiving a certain amount of money every month from the government that we know is guaranteed. So when you look at the past four years that we had under the Trump administration, I know that he you know, pardoned you. And so I don't know your relationship with him and what your thoughts on him were. When you look at the practices that he had with the kids in cages at the border or, you know, even the selection of people in his cabinet, like Betsy DeVos was over education, who probably couldn't even think herself out of a Pringles can. Do you align yourself with those policies or is it just the conservative overall conservative ideal for what America should look like that you agree with? So as a criminal justice reform advocate, when you say kids in cages, you have to understand that my perception of kids in cages is totally different from what the media is hyped up. I work in juvenile detention centers. I've worked with our kids that are in cages across this nation that somehow we have forgotten about. I also know that as an American citizen, if you're arrested and you have your child with you, your child is not going to go to jail with you. You're going to be separated from your child. This is American law. I, too, was separated from my child after giving birth in chains and had her snatched right out of my arms. And Donald Trump was not the president. So when you come to a certain country, and there are laws that apply to their own citizens, then you are going to be expected to be handled by those same laws. So any person in America that has ever been arrested and had their child with them, they've been separated from their family. So I understand how media hype is, and I understand the difference between what's factual 
and what's just being blown up in the media to control the emotions of the people. See, here's the thing that I have a question about. You said our kids as if the kids in cages, the immigrant children are, cannot also be black. There are black children in some of those cages. In fact, a, a vast, a, 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 a big majority of them are Haitian, which are black people, right? So I guess- my it, When I said our kids, I wasn't speaking about color. I'm speaking about American children. So I'm not yes, basing it yes. on color. But I, I'm basing it on color saying that if I see a black child from any country in a cage, as a black person who's pro-black, I'm gonna feel away. So I guess my question to you directly is, the day that Trump was elected as president was the day that we had the highest instances of hate crimes against people of color that entire year. He has unprecedentedly ushered in a time of hate being emboldened. How do you reconcile being about your community with a man who was literally and statistically, not media wise, literally emboldened hate against your own people? I don't reconcile those two things. How, how do so, you, how do so, you? so, and again, I thought that this interview was gonna be about me and my son and not about some people trying to make me defend Trump. But let me tell you about what I know about Trump and what I know about the Black Lives Matter movement. I know that the Black Lives Matter movement was built off of the backs of dead black men that were killed up under the Obama administration. Obama and Joe Biden did nothing at all to rectify the behavior of police killing. So a lot of that rolled over on Trump. Now, what I do know from being able to work with him personally as being someone that honestly believes Black Lives Matter, I know that this president was pro-life. That's why I stood behind him because I understand the racism behind abortion. I also know that this president permanently funded black historical colleges so they didn't have to continue to come back and forth every year for money. I also know that this president prior to COVID had the lowest black unemployment. I also know that this president was responsible for not only signing an executive order reuniting the immigrant families at the border because the news never reported that, but he also signed the First Step Act, which I was very effective in, which reunited a lot of our families that were separated by the 94 crime bill put in place by mass incarceration. So just like you were talking about, you know, supporting this man or the kids in cages or our kids or all kids, my thing is these are things that I was fighting for before Trump got in office. So if we really care about reuniting families, if we really care about children in cages, then the fight starts at home. It doesn't start when the media creates a frenzy about people crashing our borders. So my thing is, when we're talking about America and we're talking about Congress and we're talking about presidents, the way that I look at it is, I'm a parent. So as a parent, I have a responsibility to take care of my children and, and, and the responsibility I have in my home. Now that doesn't mean that I won't help the children that are across the street, down the street or around the corner. But that means that I have a responsibility to take care of my children first. And once my home is taken care of, then absolutely I will help other people. So I think that we have all had a misunderstanding when it comes to our responsibilities as a nation. Now, I'm not saying don't take care of other people, but I am saying, wait a minute, if we can fight for them, then most certainly we can fight for us. So I think that this is all about perception. Well, I'm glad that you said all of that. Because, wait, I'm glad you said that because the reason why we did invite you here, and speaking of children, was to talk about your child that you continue to misgender. So I do want to go to that. But the reason why I asked you about- I'm so about glad. I'm so glad you said that because you, do you see, but let me ask you a question. We're going to get to, I didn't interrupt you. No, no, I didn't interrupt, I didn't interrupt this. Okay. I, didn't interrupt this out. I want to get this out. I'll be very respectful. I want to be very, yeah, I can't wait either. We're going to get there. But the, okay. the, yeah, but I, I, the reason why we asked the politics is because for some of our audience, they may not know you. I know you from social media, but I don't know you. And I think one thing that we try to do here on Hollywood Unlock is allow people to show themselves and, and who they are, right? You have been very vocal in your support of Trump and in certain politics, and you are very articulate in how you lay it out. But sometimes when I look at like Diamond and Silk, they black and look like us, and they sometimes sound articulate, but they full of and I'm not saying you are, but I'm trying to understand for our audience where your mind is, because when we do get to talking about your child, you just talked about how we got to care for our kids back home. And the purpose of what led us here beyond getting to know who you were was the fact that you are in a very big fallout with your own child. So I did want to kind of put that context out there, but I hand it back over to you and let's get into it. OK, let's now it. let's address the fact that you just basically said that I'm misgendering my own child because it's Absolutely. the audacity Absolutely. for me. 
because what I have right here in my hand is called a receipt. This is a birth certificate, right? I was there. <laughs> I gave birth. See, I don't remember seeing anybody on this panel that was in the hospital room with me when I gave birth to my son. Now, I don't know if any of you have looked down in his pants to see exactly what his anatomy is, whether he has a penis or a vagina. But the last time I checked, his mama, he had a penis. So for me, I feel that it's very disrespectful because this is what we have here. There is only one person on this earth that gave birth to Javian. That's me. I can't expect anybody else to feel the way that I do because I'm the only one that is his mother. But what is disrespectful is for you as a man, right? Because that's just like if I see your mama and I say your mama is your daddy. That, that's disrespectful. That is my son. Now, if you want to address him as a woman, you can. But to feel like you have the right to force me to call my man child that I birthed, that I raised, that I sacrificed for a woman, that's disrespectful. Now, we don't have to agree. But what gives you, if you all feel like you can pressure me enough to make me believe that he is a woman, then why do you all feel like I don't have the right as his mama to pressure him enough to make him believe that he's a man? How well, do you all have more like, rights and influence than me and I'm that the mother? That is not how that works. That's not I, how I, that I, works. That is how I don't, works. Have, I don't, I don't have actually. more rights. I don't have more rights over your child than you do, but your child has more rights over their life than you do. And I think okay. that why, why you and and this I hope hope and and I I don't expect this to agree. I expect us to have a dialogue where we could both get out our points of view and. I, if you get something out of it, great. If I get something out of it, great. But you birthed Javian for sure. But then Javian grew into identifying as JBs. And in my world, I'm a gay man. Uh, Blue is is a pansexual. Uh, Damage is a heterosexual man who is raising a young boy. When you raise your, when you birth your Confused child. Confused already. Child, Break that down for me one more time. Okay. Explain to me what a pansexual okay. is. I, we okay. just all here okay. for understanding. Okay. So right now, for sure. So I, I and I and, and I'll be honest with you. I, I learned a pansexual last year, so I'm still learning. I things. can explain it. Let me first start by saying I am a homosexual like a mother. I am gay, proud to be gay. I, I, I wasn't uh, I was with women until I was 19 years. Old, and then I, I identified uh, different things that I liked and experiences that led me to identify as a gay man. Blue, do you want to explain what a pansexual is? A pansexual person is a is somebody who loves somebody who's male, female, or trans. So we would be the, the people who would find it in our hearts to be able to love somebody like your daughter. And also, there was a point that you made. Ma'am, sir, I don't, if you're going to call I'm him not my a daughter, I'm going to call you a man. If you're going to call him a woman, I'm going to address you as a well, man I'm, for I'm, the rest I'm, of the I'm show. Gonna, I'm gonna okay, well, let's just call him point, Jay. Though. Let's just say Jay. No. Let's be, never, respectful. Would, okay. Let's be respectful. Let's be respectful to everybody because I am his I mother and I do deserve respect as his mother because you want can I me speak to disrespect now? your mother. Can I speak now? Can I, can I please speak yes, now? Yes, sir, you can. So I never, first of all, your daughter asked to be called that. I never asked to be called. But you're not talking to my daughter I, I, right I, now. I, you're talking to me. You're talking okay, to so, me. Okay, so I will talk to, to you directly. directly. So, so first, son, first of my, all, my son, first of all, take the bass out of your voice because I'm trying to have a respectful conversation. Take okay, the bass sir. out your voice. Okay, take sir. the bass out your voice. Okay, I'll be whatever sir. you need me to be. I'll, need, I'll, I'll be whatever you need me to be. I'm, I'm still going to answer the question. That's what does make you believe you can be anything you want to be. I just yeah, we not, we not gonna be, we're not going to have a respectful no, conversation if you're going to keep addressing my son as a woman. Not when you're talking to me, sir. We will have a respectful conversation conversation but here's what i ask right your daughter your your child let me say this your child came on this show and identified as a female right and so out of respect for your child i i, I let me say your child i'm going to refer to your child with the proper pronouns and that is she and her because that's how your child wants to be acknowledged right i think what what you're doing right now with blue is you're taking her sexuality and you're weaponizing her with it by calling her a him when she has she identified. Let me respond. I, I still haven't responded though. Wait, let me hand it to Blue first, and then let me hand it to Blue first, and then you, uh, Angela. Okay, go ahead, Blue. You asked the question about what gives people the right to call your child what we're calling your child, right? And I have an actual answer for you that is scientifically based and not based in emotion. 
you you have a you had a male child. Male refers to gender. That is something that is biological. But being a woman is a personal truth. That's actually not gender identity and gender are different. You can Google it yourself. I didn't make this up. So yes, that birth certificate speaks about your child's genitals. It says nothing about your child's gender identity. So All what right. I'm saying is you keep conflating gender with gender identity. And that is where you lose the audience because your child can be born a male all day long. Your child's gender identity is female and we're choosing to respect a legal adult. So legally speaking, I'm actually being very respectful by trusting a legal adult to tell me what to call them. That's the answer to your question. Where did you Where did you study and where did you get your the information Harvard, Harvard. from? So the answer is the Harvard School of Public Health. What That's degree do you What degree do you have when it comes to gender dysphoria or transvestite disorder? Because I have a degree. I have a bachelor's degree. Not only do I have a bachelor's degree, excuse me, it's my turn to talk, ma'am. Not only do I have a bachelor's degree. I have the knowledge and I also have the experience because I have raised this child from birth. My child allegedly. is- You, you allegedly me. raised allegedly. that child, allegedly. Ma'am, ma'am, ma I don't- so Your child says otherwise. Where's your proof that I didn't, up, blue, 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 that I didn't blue, raise? Because right now blue, what you're blue, doing blue, is slander and defamation. Because you're trying to tell a mother she didn't raise her child. Ma'am, I only went to prison for two years. He was three, I got out when he was five. He's been with me ever since, okay? I raised this child. This is a male child with a feminine personality. Your personality does not determine your sex. You cannot have gender without having sex. It is all tied together. That is the reason why when you have someone that is transgender that chooses to become another sex, it is based off of what? Male or female. You can't have gender without sex. He has a feminine personality, absolutely. Now, let's just get for real for a minute. When we're and 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 I want to be clear because there are a lot of articles and a lot of media reports out and a lot of people that try to make it seem as if I do not love my son or that I am against the LGBTQ community. I am not against the LGBTQ community. I have plenty of friends. I'm sure you all know Kellen Derrick. Ask Kellen Derrick who helped him start his business in his basement in his kitchen. That was me. I got plenty of friends in the community. A lot of people try to compare my son to Shauna. When I met Shauna, Shauna told me her name was Shauna. I ain't never been in Shauna pants. Shauna is my friend. Shauna is not my son. What Shauna does does not impact my life. I am a mother. If there is a disorder or if there is whatever it is that my son wants to identify with that leads him to believe that he is a woman, and if that process is going to lead to dismemberment or castration, as a mother, I have a right to protect my lifeline and my bloodline. Now, you can roll your eyes in the back of your head all you want, but I have the right well, I'm not to protect my, well, I'm not my, my... I'm not talking to you too, sir. I'm talking to Miss Blue over here. I, I have wasn't rolling right eyes to, at all. As a mother, a I don't have to agree, but it's not hate. It's not... And, what, and, and you this, also this, have this, to understand... This is what... You also you have to understand... Said, wait, wait, but this is what your child said about your relationship with the gay community, because they did say exactly what you just said. So I want to make sure to validate what you said. But this is what JB said on the show about your relationship. I saw relationship. it. Do you want to hear something crazy? Angela actually has a lot of gay and trans friends. Believe it wait, or what? not. Angela has a lot of gay and trans friends. She has a lot of gay and trans friends. She just did an interview the other day with Shauna Brooks. Um, do you guys know who Shauna is? Yes, yeah, trans girl. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So trans girl, she respects her pronouns. <laughs> she respects- Oh, get out of here. Are you serious? Yeah, she respects wait, her wait, pronouns. Wait, 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 she used wait, to do- stop, stop. She, she, re she, re she responds to Shauna as a she? Yes. So my question is, why would yeah. you do that with Shauna, but not your own child? Is it because I did not give birth to Shauna? I didn't give birth to Shauna. You you can't compare Shauna to my son. Shauna didn't come out my body. I didn't raise Shauna. I knew my son had a penis before he did. What you all are asking me to do as a mother, you're asking me to lie to myself about who I know my son is. Now he's beautiful. He 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 has an awesome personality. He's intelligent. I love him. I just do not agree with the confusion. I, again, I'm his mother. Now, you all don't have to agree with me, but that's my child. Did your mother agree with everything y'all no, did? I know Damage has a question, and I want to be clear, Angela. I don't want to fight with you. I'm not here to um, 
to uh, force you to understand or believe anything. What I'm trying to do, and so if I can just ask, if we can try to all bring it down a little bit so we can get to a place where we can both talk and hear each other, right? I'm not going to attack you for being a gay man who believes that anybody who identifies however they identify should be respected as such, because that's what I believe. Now, I, I, I want to get to the heart of what the reason is why you refuse to accept your child's pronouns. Hold on. not and, and, and I'm trying to understand, is it because you're a mother who's trying to hold on to the identity they want for their child and not embrace who they see themselves to be? Is it ignorance? Is it just what? I don't know what it is. That's why we're here to have this conversation. And I, I'm, I'm a mother. Right? I, I'm a mother that knows exactly what she gave birth to. I gave birth to a man child. If, if my man child decides, right, and, and we can talk about science because I know girlfriend got a hell of a degree over there. We can talk about science and we can talk about what's facts. And what's facts is even once you go all the way through with the transition, because I do have plenty of friends that are in the movement, you still have that realization that you are not a biological female. So as a parent, what I'm saying is, son, Hold on. Just like you said, Jason, you said when you was younger, you had been with women, like you gave yourself time to, to figure out what it was that you wanted. My son is only 19 years old. If you decide to make this decision, this is not the time. You are too young. I don't think that he has lived long enough to make this type of life changing decision. And as a mother, I have the right to say, son, I love you. But no, I don't agree with this lifestyle. Son, yes. I accept you absolutely, Javian, but I don't accept Boom Quisha. Maybe I don't like Boom Quisha. Maybe she got a nasty attitude. Maybe she disrespectful. But well, my, what you all family, don't have the right family, to do. My family, my family stayed out of my business during my my experience, though, on my journey. That was the difference. My family didn't interject or disrespect my choices. They supported me. They asked people in the family to stay out of my business. They allowed me to grow into who I am and still to this day support me. I have never disrespected my choices and sexualities. Because like, your family was like that, is our family supposed to be like that? So because your mother didn't care whether or not you would castrate yourself, does that mean I'm not supposed to care about well, my son dismembering his mother, body? My mother, my, mother, my mother wasn't in prison like you. She was on drugs. So she was in prison by drugs. So so both of you had your own challenges. Yeah, I never so, smoked but crack. I'm sure, but I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I got money. So my, mother, my mother smoked crack. My mother smoked crack. My mother did heroin. She did all that. But she also birthed me. And she birthed me and brought me into a world that allowed me to figure out who I was. And I'm not saying that you're a good mother or a bad mother, because I'm not here to cast judgment on you. I've never cast a judgment on any guest that's been on the show. What I'm trying to understand is your daughter, your child does not identify as Bonquisha. Your daughter has said, call me JBs. I am she. And so why support that? Wait, 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 that. I said, I said, because I gave him his name, right? Me and his father picked his name out, spelled it, filled out the birth certificate because we gave him his name. We have the right to call him by that name. Now, are you saying as a mother that I don't have the right to call my son by the name that I gave him at birth? It ain't been no name change and it ain't been no transition. So why are you my all asking answer, me answer, to respect answer, something answer, that's answer, not answer. even real? It doesn't my exist. Answer, my, my answer to that is yes. If your daughter, your child wants to be called what she wants to be called, you should honor that. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah. if your yeah, mother want to be called a dumb crack head, is that what you gonna call her? I'm well, sad. Well, she, wait, wait, wait. I'm wait. My mother is. Wait, 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 wait. You brought her up. I don't know. I don't have to call my son what he wants me to call him just because he asked me to. I'm gonna give you your answer, but see, the problem is. You 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 want to come into this show the way you do your Instagram and this ain't your house. You're a guest. And I don't know how people come into your house. I don't have to be a guest. I don't have to be a guest. Come, I don't know how people come into here. You don't have to be. But you, can't, you don't have to be. But this is not a zoo. This is not a zoo. This is not a zoo exactly. or something. So all the animal and animal, So when you animal, throw animal, shots, animal. be prepared to receive I'm them not, back. I'm if I was throwing a shot, not hitting, you know, though. Because although you called my mother a dirt, hold on, a dirt, put hold us on. all I didn't call her. I didn't call her. I said if she now wanted to be called. A dirty crackhead. But see, the way your behavior is, even in my mother's darkest days, she didn't act like you. 
You came on this well, show. Well, listen, talking the listen, 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 I ain't never smoked crack or heroin either, and that's probably why and, I know my you know son what? is a man you know and not a woman. You know what? So but you need to you ain't your show. You're smoking crack. No, that's okay. And you know what? You and your homosexual, whatever issues you got, because you probably ate some at some point in prison, and it got you fed up. And you know what? You are the most ignorant piece of person I've had on this show. And if you can figure out how to clock the fuck out like you did mentally when it came to your own child, you can go ahead and go. And by the way, ma'am, you spit a transsexual child out your p Wait, turn her mic on. Is her mic off? Turn and she's amazing. Off. Her daughter is amazing, your too. Your child off. is amazing in spite of okay, you. Okay, well, while you're still here with your bad makeup and your bad eyelashes, let me go ahead and tell you something. Your daughter's prettier than you. Your daughter put on better makeup than you, and your pro your daughter's probably getting the d that you ain't having. That's why you're such a mean spirited evil bitch. Click her out this camera. Now let me just say this: I blue damage. I have never in the five years that this show has been here had a guest come on the show with the level of ignorance and disrespect that I just saw by this coon ass woman named Angela Stanton King. There's nothing king or queen or royal about you. You are trash. Now, I thought you might be trash, but I also thought you would have watched the show and seen how we've respected your daughter and brought her on our platform to give her voice in her journey identifying as a woman. And the fact that we care to respect this woman's child more than her is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Before we get started, I want to say, Blue, I apologize that you had to talk to that orangutan. You know what? I, mm. This is not part of the Bailey circle, <laughs> and I don't know how that went left. But I also want to hand this mic now over to Damage, who was waiting patiently to say something, but didn't get a chance to. Damage. No, I, I really wanted to ask the question because I felt like she came in and this. She seems like she's in constant defense mode, right? She took whatever little thing you, she thought y'all said and took that as an insult and went insane. And what I wanted to ask her was, I wanted to know the history of her raising her daughter what was it like and where did he feel like the hostility started i really wanted to take a step back because she was so called in the moment of the decision that her son decided to uh identify herself as today but i wanted to hear the history and what how was it growing up what what were the issues because it seemed like there's some underlying hostility in this person's soul and i really wanted to get to the core of that but we never got there because she was so amped up throwing insults this way and that way and this way you don't even know us how do you speak so nasty to people you don't even know? She doesn't so, even know I her mean, child, though. She doesn't even know her child, so she's and used to that's talking nasty. Why, and that's why I wanted to ask that question, because you keep talking about, oh, we signed the birth certificate, I raised my son, or whatever. How well do you really know your child? And that's why I wanted to ask that question. Well, well even... Would, but the thing, that, the thing that jumped out the screen for me was not only the misgendering of her own child, but how when Blue identified as pansexual... She then weaponized her sexuality and kept repeatedly referring to Blue as a sir, as a man. Now, yep. I don't really know how to explain ignorance. Blue, what was what was going on in your mind when that was happening? I'm gonna be honest. I felt a little bit of pity um, because she's not an intellectual giant. Like she's not the brightest crayon in the box, and she kept on saying things that were easy to just Google and dispel. And so, a part of me is wondering at what kind of echo chamber she's been in. I feel like she's been sitting around with a red hat talking to other MAGA lovers about things and just spitting out memes. Everything she was saying was a lazy, like super tr pro Trump meme. And so I felt bad for her because the facts don't agree with her. Forget personal feelings. The facts don't agree with her. I also think it's interesting that she says she has friends who are in the LGBTQ community. She's a perfect example of how we are tokens. Sometimes you can have somebody as a friend, but the way you treat that same kind of person in your family is how you really feel about about them. So anybody who calls her a friend who's gay, trans, or anything else, you might want to question your tribe because you let a wolf in, in the sheep's hen. And another thing too, the he thing, right? Calling me a he, that was so lazy. She has a thing where if she feels like she's intellectually losing an argument, which by the way, all I did was answer a question, guys. She said, why can't I misgender my child if I gave birth? And I said, because the birth certificate is only a receipt of gender, not gender identity. That was a very clear and simple answer, but people like her are very allergic to facts and the facts offended her more than anything. I feel bad for JB's. JB's, if you're watching this and I hope you are, you are a living miracle that you came out of that putrid, 
human being, I'm not going to go any further because I know that's still your mother. You are a living miracle that you came off so beautiful and so strong and so smart in spite of who tried to raise you. Because I don't think that's who actually and, raised and, her. And JB I'm going to blame, I'm gonna blame Michelle Obama for, for what you just said. Because Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. And Funky Doniva, who I quote, said, bitch, when they go low, we go to hell. And and here's the deal. I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing for your mother. Okay. My mother, Deborah Lynn Stathatos, who is dead, died as a result of complications to her liver that came out of her drug usage over the years. I've been very open about my mother's drug use in my book. God must have forgotten about me. Um, I talked about her using cocaine, heroin, and crack. And you know what? I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm also open about the fact that I raised my brother who was a crack baby who was in my mother's stomach while she would relapse on drugs. Let me be very clear. My mother, the dirty crack kid that you called her, birthed a child who's blossomed into a king and that runs this internet. That's number one. Number two, your daughter, JB's, who's been on this show and who I've interacted with on Bego is beautiful, intelligent, articulate, and still gave yep. you grace and didn't disrespect you the way that we want to here on this show. In all the years we've had this show and our audience that's watched this, we have never had a guest come on here and burn the f out like you. So when you talk about crackhead, Miss King, you literally displayed behavior of a crackhead. Now, I wanna move past the antics because you know, honestly, that sideshow that we just saw, that's what people do in our community when they get uncomfortable with conversations that we need to have. You know, mm -hmm. your, your daughter, your child, who you said uh, had a delusional relationship with her deceased father, who, who is a black woman in the midst of a protect, hash black, uh, a protect uh, black women uh, campaign, attacked Tamar Braxton in her motherhood and her uh, womanhood as a black woman when she supported your daughter. I was trying to get to the heart of if the issue was the fact that she just could not fathom the idea that she birthed somebody who happens to be gay. That's what I was trying to get to. I wasn't even well, trying to attack her. Did we get to exactly. that? Exactly. No, we couldn't get nowhere. No, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't get to that. We couldn't get to that. The, the, the thing was, it was the narcissism for me because me, peep how many times she said I and yep. mine and me. And I'm a father. Once you have a kid, it's the most selfless thing you can do. So if my son was feeling any type of way, I would, if, even if I don't understand, I'm going to sit down and try to understand because I'm a parent. It was I, and I feel, and why can't I say, because it's not about you. This is that person's life. If that person says they want to be called she, I'm going to call her she. What does it, what does it do to her to do that? But damage, you know what it does to her though? It makes her feel embarrassed. I love that for the past two weeks, we've been mentioning narcissists and today we were actually gifted with seeing one in action. We saw one in the wild yes. in its natural habitat. A narcissist break, break, finds break it impossible. Down, break, break that down, break that down. So a narcissist is somebody who finds it physically and intellectually impossible to separate other people's identities from themselves. So if a narcissist has a child, everything the child does is a reflection of me. If they have a husband, if my husband has cancer and he looks bad, now I look bad. They can't empathize because everything comes back to them. She mm. literally was acting like a textbook narcissist where every time we tried to see JB's as an individual and respect her as an individual, Angela is mentally incapable of seeing her child without seeing herself. And she doesn't like what she sees when she looks in the mirror. Her reflection is not something that she can live with as somebody who gave birth to a freak of nature, which is why she can be friends with those freaks, but God forbid one comes out of her. She, she told on exactly. herself in so many ways. She is a, such a mm -hmm. textbook narcissist. And let's be honest, guys, a lot of black parents act like watered down versions of her where they don't allow their kids to reveal who they really are. So as much as you might be in the comment section after this saying, she's such a horrible parent, some of you are acting just like this. And maybe check yourselves about who, who am I and who is my child and where do those two places separate? JB's is her damage own person. As, damage as the only parent up here who's raising a young man when you when you listen to the conversation, you see the exchange that we just had with Angela. I'm sure you could understand as a parent her concern for her child and you know bringing up the birth certificate and all that. But what, do you think that you would have a, a a block that would prevent you from loving Legend should he choose or to to live a different lifestyle than you have uh, ideally and, for him? And, no, that's a great question because that's all all I was seeing was narcissism, I and mine, oh. and then it's like. 
Well, I guess the love from you was conditional, huh? Based yep. on it. As long as JB's did whatever mom wanted, you would have loved the crap out of her. But because it didn't go that way, you can't even have respect. At the very least, just respect. No, I, I can't ever see myself being like that because at the very least, you can have respect for another person. That's somebody that came out of you. What is the point of disrespecting you? Going online, you go on this show, you disrespect the multiple people. In the process, you're still disrespecting your child. When does it end? Or so about you. When she was arguing with you, when you when it stopped, she pulled out two phones. It was the most narcissistic mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Two mm -hmm. cell phones to tell the world about what I think about what I got going on. But this ain't about you. And honestly, this interview was to kind of get to know her, but it was it's really about JB's at the end of the day. And that's why I feel like she really got so nasty about it as well so quickly. Well, when you see it, was it, because this is what I'm, I'm, I'm still processing what happened. We've never disrespected a guest. I had a gun pulled on me on this show, okay? Matter of fact, let's just show that clip of how much respect I showed uh, Boot and Gang. All right, you can say whatever you want, whatever on the show. I wouldn't pull the gun out, and I don't feel comfortable having a gun in the studio. You could put it. One bus with shots. No, not in here. Two, 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 five, 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 five. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, game. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, come on, let's scoot over a little bit. Boom. Yeah, boom let's game. get. Hold on, hold on, game shoot. Okay, I'm not gonna shoot you, bro. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Even with a gun being pulled on me, I didn't attack anybody. Okay. I, I've never thought that there would be a day. I mean, I knew that this was going to be a difficult conversation, but I never thought that we would have a situation where I was uh, having to go there with a person. Now, let me ask, is, was it the narcissism that she could be friends with transsexuals and gay people yes. and reference them as her friends but not love her own child that she created? Yeah, because it's a token. She wants to be able to befriend them so she can look good in, in the public opinion but cannot accept that her child. By the way, I don't want to gleam over this. Jason, you are a trooper. You are an industry vet. You've been around for a while. You've heard worse things. The way that she came at you was disgusting. And the only part of that whole conversation, even when she called me he, I didn't care. I know what I got in my pants. The only part that actually really offended me was when she came after your mother, right? Because she's a mother herself. So I think it's kind of rich because narcissists are also hypocrites that we're supposed to respect her as a mother. But the second the facts don't line up with her version of the truth, now she's going after your mother. What happened to all that respect about motherhood? Narcissists are hypocrites. The rules kept changing as long as they were working in her favor. And Jason, what she said to you was disgusting and that wasn't okay. I just have to say that because I know you're going to be like, oh, I'm fine. But like, it was gross for me to watch. I'd never want to see that again. No, that was disgusting. I, I, that no, was disgusting. I, I, I appreciate that. The one thing that I was processing as she was talking about my mother is one is she's dead. And, and, and somebody asked me this question today. So crazy. A friend of mine from prison called me. This is a friend of mine who was a childhood friend who got locked up for a murder years ago when he was a teenager. He's my age now in prison serving a life sentence. And he said to me, because his mother just passed away, he said, Jason, did you get to wreck it? Because I had a really bad relationship with my mom. He said, Jason, I have a question. This was the last question he asked me before we hung up. He said, I have to ask you, did you reconcile your relationship with your mom before she died? And I, and I, had, and I found myself running through the years of the drug use and the abandonment and the abuse and the not believing and all this as a kid. And I look at where I'm at right now in my life. And I said, you know what? I gave my mother closure when she died. But the thing that I also gave myself was equal closure. And so mm -hmm. I felt very confident in closing that chapter of my life. And he also said, do you still grieve your mom's death? And I said, no, because I fully closed that part of my life where I can look back and say, you know, I love my mom and maybe I wasn't a perfect child and all this and that. But I will say in this experience, my mother never dug into my sexual life. She never judged me when I never brought girlfriends around anymore. She never judged. She never asked who all my cute friends. Well, she did ask who my cute friends were, but she wasn't asking why they were spending the night all the time. You know what I mean? And your mom knows. And so right. when she was saying these things, what came over me was the comfort in understanding that I am meeting somebody on the same level who does not who, who I'm going to expect to respect my mother who doesn't even respect a life that she created. You know what I mean? Right. So it, it was like when my mother's narcissism or my mother's bipolar disorder would kick in, I had to say to myself, this is, this is not my mom. This is her illness. And when I was looking at uh, Angela, I was look, I felt like I was looking at her illness.
No, nah, she definitely got an illness, but at the end of the day, if you go that low to disrespect somebody, come on, you know, that's 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 disgusting. She don't really know you. She don't know Blue. She don't know me. So to think it's okay, regardless of what the situation is and how you feel about your mother, the reason she said it was to be the ultimate, most nasty person she can be. Yep. All because you said you continue to misgender your daughter. That's not an attack on somebody. If anything, you know that what? could be and labeled as an opinion. And as a member of the LGBTQ community, I even stretched it a little bit by by not identifying her child's gender by calling her her child because I wanted yep. to give her a little bit of respect but still respect JB's choice. And even mm -hmm. in stopping uh calling referring to JB's as her daughter and saying her child, she still was taking the so at the end of the day, to my audience, I apologize that I lost it for, in front of you. But to the LGBTQ community, you know, I, I realized that I have built the platform, that I have a responsibility to be a strong and fierce and fearless advocate for our people. And I'm never going to allow anybody to come in this platform and just outright ignorantly disrespect our people. Like, that's not happening. So, uh, I, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, and to JB's, I will also say, again, we're talking about a 19-year-old. We're talking about a 19-year-old who is a child, even though she's smart and she's making her money and she's talented and she, she's, she, she's 19. And to Angela's point, if JB's is going through a process of figuring it out and may switch later, it's her right the whole way through. She gets to be JB's today. She can be JVN tomorrow. She could be JVN on Monday and JB's on Tuesday. She gets to decide how she identifies, and we all are obligated to respect that. I guess I'm confused as to what is so hard to get about that. Jason, you are talking about showing JB's love, and love is always, always offensive for people who come from a place of hate. We are talking from mm -hmm. two different realities. We're talking about love and love is offensive to those who find power in hate. Disempowered people love to be hateful because for a split second, they get to pretend like they actually have power. Angela is a disempowered person. She might as well be a troll in the comment section. And she thought by being hateful, she could pretend to have power. What she didn't expect is for us to be unmoved by her. Well, what I want to say to people watching too is remember that Angela Stanton King was not only a convicted uh, prisoner um, and the mother who abandoned her children and went to prison, she was also a political candidate. These are the people that are running around your community organizing support to create legislation that affects you and your families. And if you're not involved in the political process, this is who will be representing you. Like, this mm -hmm. is why I keep telling people, y'all be looking just at the president. Y'all better be looking at the mayor. Y'all better be looking at the city council member. Y'all better be looking at who runs the dog catchers. You better be looking at the senator, the congressman, the representative. You better be looking at anything that is elected to represent your interest because this thing with the bad eyelashes that was just on this show could be representing you. Yikes. Ugh. Angela, you're, na you're a nasty, nasty person. That's my opinion just from what I saw. I mean, we just grown as fuck up here too. Like, it's not like we was talking to somebody that was 22, 19 years old. Like, you a grown woman. Wait, Demi says she long in the tooth. You a little too old for that. Okay, Demi. I'm just saying, we <laughs> no, we are too mature for that. But like, I know we are, but like you're that, right. That's yeah. crazy. Like calling you yeah, sir right. for no reason. That shit is wild. I do not look like a sir. I'm cute. Whatever. <laughs> It didn't wait, even matter. Wait, it was just the left. first time she, the first time she called you sir, I said, oh lord, because I told y'all. When we come into the show, we gonna match the energy. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, you you definitely play Michelle Obama, but you know, no, I I was I chanted before this. I chanted because I knew that she was gonna make me come out of my character, and only special occasions, and she's not special enough for me to show you that side yet. Well, listen, I uh, all I'm gonna leave all I'm gonna leave the audience with is this: you know, if you have children, and if you're thinking of having children, please make sure that you find a way to find your center on compassion and empathy. Because this is the thing, I acknowledge that I don't live a lifestyle right now, nor have an idea of wanting to change my lifestyle to have that level of empathy and focus on another human being. And so I, I would say from a person who had abandonment issues, whose mother wasn't, you know, gave them up, a father wasn't there, love your children, man. 
Because at the end of the day, they're going to grow up and be whoever they're going to grow up. And God put that child in you for that child to come out and bless the world. But you and how you treat them can really shape them into being a really messed up person. And I'm so, so glad that JB's has grown into becoming a very smart, intelligent, um, per and beautiful person and to damage in blue. You know, I, I thought that we did our best as responsible journalists, um, to <laughs> unlock a side of Angela that we thought may have gotten, uh, missed, but apparently, um, it wasn't no size. It wasn't no size. She's a one trick yeah. pony. That part. So unconditional love. love. Unconditionally. Yeah. Love your children a little bit more and unconditionally. Until then, uh, just drop comments below because we already know you got a lot to say. Peace. Ciao.